Welcome to the Hank Show Show, ladies and gentlemen. Goombas and goombas and adios amigos, everybody. My guest today is a homegrown Norristown person running for judge of Montgomery County. Now, this is great. Great things happen in Norristown. Some of the best judges in Montgomery County Court came from Norristown. Judge Danahauer, the bridge is named after him. He lived on the corner of the Calb and uh, Freely. I think it's Freely, yeah, the corner. And uh, Judge Taxis lived on Powell Street. He lived in the uh, 1500, I live in the 1700. So now we have someone that's running for judge that was born and raised in Norristown, went to school with my daughter. Now what else do we need? We're the county seat. We need North Towns coming back, and this is a good way of coming back. Okay, so without further ado, I want you to meet my guest, Reddy, from Norristown, Pennsylvania. Tell them who you are. Wendy Loud Roth and clear because of our hearing aids. Wendy Rothstein, Hank, and it's great to be here on your show today. Tell me how, you, how we met. Well, we actually met each other years ago when I was at Roosevelt Elementary School. You used to come as a police officer. Oh, yeah. Never cross when the light is red, the light is red. You're right, red. you're right. And you used to come talk to us as, as, as young students, and you would tell us that. And also, I was a safety, and you would, you would educate us as safeties. Oh, I was a safety right. at Fernance and Astor Street wow. and, and that type of thing. So that's how we met each other. Also, your daughter and I went to elementary school together. And your niece and I, Joanne Olszewski, is the jury commissioner of Friends. So yeah. we have connections all the way around. Did you come into the campagna? There was I a did. meeting there. So, all right, now we're going to, you're going to, you're running for judge. A lot of people want to know something about the judge. So tell me something about yourself, okay? Uh, where did you grow? You grew up in Norristown. I grew up in Norristown. I grew up on Astor Street between Warren and Fernance. I'm a, actually a fourth generation Norristonian. My, you know, my family's been there, and I moved out of Norristown when I went to high school. Didn't go far over to Plymouth and graduated from Plymouth White Marsh. But I went to Roosevelt Elementary School. I yeah. went to Rittenhouse. My dad uh, graduated from Norristown High School in '43. My brother graduated in '70. Right. My aunt graduated. My cousins. So we have a strong connection to Norristown, and I have uh, very uh, favorable feelings and memories of Norristown. Yeah, I know where you lived on Astor Street, the North End High School band used to march down Astor Street to Sturger and into the, into the stadium. We used to watch them all the time. It was oh, great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, now, tell me something about your family now. Well, my family. Everybody wants to know something about going to run for judge. Go ahead. All right, I'm a single mom of a daughter who's 26 years old. She, um, she has her master's in athletic training, sports medicine, and she works as the athletic trainer at Cheltenham High School. So she works Where? with... Cheltenham High School, Cheltenham. Ooh, and she works with all the, the, the female and the male athletes for the football team, the baseball team, the basketball team, okay. lacrosse, hockey, wow. everything. She's the one in charge, and she does it. I'm very proud of her and that type yeah. of thing. I have a, a brother who is also an attorney, and we have a very small. Brother? I have a brother, Bruce Goldenberg, who's also an attorney. And in, he's in town here? In town. He's the equitable distribution master. What's he works his, for the county. His name? It, his name is Bruce Goldenberg. Oh, oh Goldberg. Oh, God. Do I know him? You may. I don't know. You may. But my family owned a furniture store on Main Street up yeah. until 1970 from the late 1800s. Goldenberg's Furniture Store it was 118 yeah. East Main Street, across now from where that Five Saints Distillery is, right over yeah, there. Right, and, right. And uh, as you know, Hank, years ago, that two block area of Main Street was the place to go. Oh, and whether yeah. it was the Norris yeah. Theater or whether it was the various businesses. Right, right. We, we had the when Grand I, Theater, Norris Theater. We had the tobacco store there. Yep. We had the triplex shoes, my father's shoe store, and uh, Woolworth, uh, and uh, Kresge's, and uh, Grant's, and well, we had all these stores. Oh, now it's, you know, maybe it'll come back, maybe. Well, you know. it's great that Five Saints came back and they're, yeah, they're yeah, doing they're their coming their back and, little by little, yeah. you know. By and by, Fourth of July, right? Okay, <laughs> now you are running for judge. I am. Why would you want to run for judge? Well, you know, why not become a dentist or a doctor or something? Well, I've been an attorney for 34 years, so I have well, you are a lot an of attorney. I am. I have a lot of experience, and I've you experience. Tell me, you, lady, you want me to read about all her? her <laughs> she got more degrees and everything. In fact, I knew. Say, you have so many degrees, you, you call them kinder, 
Can thermometer. <laughs> no. Yeah. So go ahead. Well, Hank, I'm the type of person that gets things done. People come to court with problems. They need closure for their problems. So I'm going to try to meet with the people, try to get them to reach an agreement. If not, I'll give them their day in court and give them a decision so they can move on with their life. Do, you, do we find judges doing that now, is trying to settle things before they start banging heads? Some do and some don't. Some are better than it and others. But we need to bring the people together, give them a court date, and a lot of yeah. things, as they say, settle in the courthouse steps. So when they have a hearing date, they either got to settle or they got to go to court and have their hearing and the judge give them a decision. That's what you need to be. You need to move these cases along yeah. so people can move on with their life, Hank. Yeah. Well, you know, you're taking a, a position uh, judge, and uh, they have to hear things. I was former policeman. I had to I see things, you know, and uh, tragic things about family, accidents, whatever it may be. And, and you, when you get before a judge, has, the judge has to decide and become the sad thing, you know. Family, same if the, if it's family, so you know you you, you got to have something to, to keep you level because you you hear something, you see something, you, and you feel sorry for somebody, but still in all, the guy did wrong, whatever he did, you know, or she. We find girls doing just as much as the men now, so you have to prepare yourself, you know, and uh, you have a little, you have to have something to lean on, whether it's religion, whether it's your family, whether it's something that keeps you gone. And you have to be a, a person that's, that's willing to listen, should be 90% listen, 10% talking. And then you're, you're going, what am I doing? <laughs> well, you're right. I'm, I'm the, telling the, you. The judges need to listen because people, right. when they come to court, they want to tell their story right. and it's important that judges listen important that judges keep an open mind so that people can tell their story and then it and they need to respect the people that come into court everyone has to have a fair shot right you know what i'm saying and then at some point in time though the court needs to make a decision but you're right listening is one of the most important things that a judge can do because a lot of times people want to vent they want to vent about their problem right and they have to let have, them listen yeah. you'll, you'll get more you'll hear more and they, they have to feel like they had their fair shot That's right the right thing, right happened. right Right. All right. Now, uh, uh, as an attorney, what do you specialize? What do you uh, specialize like some in marriage, some in accidents, something? What do you think? Well, when, general? I, when I started out 30 some years ago, I practiced in all the courts. In 30 years? I oh, know, my God. You look I like know. a young chicken here. Okay, well, what thank you. you thank, thanks. <laughs> but I started. I did some family. I did some criminal. I did some juvenile. I did some work. Juvenile. Sport, yeah. Well, I, I did that, that, civil that. juvenile over a Port Indian Road there. Now I'm primarily what they call civil cases, if people have disputes among themselves. Yeah, if there's a change in that, uh, now uh, negotiating, are they negotiating a lot? There is, there is, and I think the, the uh, good attorneys try to negotiate and get a good deal for their clients yeah. because a lot of times court's not the answer. A lot of times it's not the answer to go to court, yeah. you know, or to have your trial. So it's important that the people negotiate and try to reach an agreement among themselves. If not... Then get to court and have your you know, day in court. You know, you're you're setting an example. I have teenage high school kids in North End High School watching this, and you're setting an example. You're a lawyer for 30 years. Now you're going to be a judge. Judge the highest highest position in the in the county. You know, and uh, you never know what's more, the Supreme Court, the Common Pleas Court, whatever, you know. I'm happy with here, right here. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We, we, we want to get this first step. But talking about students and talking about Norristown, like I said, I have a strong feeling towards Norristown because I went to the grade school here. Um, through the Bar Association, we have a civics program. We come out, and once a month for one hour, we go to the middle school. So we go to Stewart, we go to East Norton, or we go to Eisenhower, uh -huh. and we teach one so hour. drop the seat. Yep, we teach a civics class. Yeah. And one of the important things is like negotiating, you can use that everywhere in life. Even students at high school or, or anywhere, you have problems, you have disputes. You negotiate means you come to an agreement among yourselves to yeah. try to work it out or that type of thing. So it, that civics program is an important program. That's good. And, and you like know, get that education, get that education, you know. And uh, I think that's one of the greatest things. Now, you do little things on the side. Yes, I the do. The left side, the right side. I do. Elmwood Park Zoo. 
Uh, Tell me about that now. You are vice president. I am, and that's near and dear to me because... The greatest uh, moving forward, I guess, state, guys, statewide. You got it. I lived uh, two blocks from the zoo as a kid, and you'll remember this. We They used to have a lion there, and at night we would hear the lion roar when you yeah. had your windows open. <laughs> but about 10 years ago, I got involved, and I'm glad to be back. It's a oh, great place. Oh, you right near it. Yeah, right? yeah. It's a great place. Um, we have a great executive director, Al Zone, and the sky's not even the limit. We're doing so many things there. We have a whole new jaguar exhibit, and we had two little jaguar cubs yeah. born last year and, uh, there. And then you got the Stan Husky just jumped the board. Stan Husky, that was a great move for us that, that yeah. he's joined us. He's helping us. And we're just going to continue to expand and do what we do. And if you, people haven't been there lately, they don't know what's there because it's completely right. different than it was when we were little kids and that type of thing. It's a great, it's not just a Norristown institution, it's a great countywide institution. Yeah. And there's a lot of great things we do for the community That's and that right. type of thing. And Hank, I brought you a present. Oh. I brought you, I brought you, <laughs> I brought you a hat. From I got to get in. Uh, how about that? I don't know if it's going to fit me. Well, or not. it's, you know. But, um, you know. Um, hey, Rock. <laughs> Get my man, Joe Bookwright. How's that? There you go. You look How's great. How's that look? All right. You look great. You look great. And you let me know. We'll give you. an animal st song? Uh, I don't know. I forget it. No, whatever. We'll give you a VIP tour. Let me know when you want one. But it's a, it's a great place, and we do a lot of good things. It yeah. makes me feel good. Because well, I'll tell you, one of the best there. things they're doing is they're partnering with the Columbus Monument, yes. which I was the founder. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm not going to be around all the time, you know, so uh, it's somebody's going to take over and, and move on with it. And uh, we're preparing with Alzone and uh, Stan Husky and the committee. They are, we got a committee that's working for, uh, and uh, Pat Mascara, yeah. and we're working to have a big celebration on October the 12th, the 12th. When Columbus discovered America, you know, so. And we're thrilled to help out. It's oh, again, yeah. that's a, a great asset to the area there, along with the park yes, yes. and along with the zoo. And we're doing everything we can yeah. to keep that area nice. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put. I'm, I'm uh, interviewing uh, the uh, president council next week or so. I'm going to say, why don't we have a police precinct down by the zoo or by the Columbus mine in between? where the restroom is. That could be a combination restroom and police precinct in the back. You know, you have a police station all the way down the east end of town, and that's it. One here, one there. you got to have precinct so we can cover it. Our town is getting the point. They're saying, well, uh, the chief came out with 40 points. Uh, thing, but you got to have the police. got to be there all over. So you got to cover it like the do. So, and the, and the zoo is doing uh, great things. Uh, in fact, uh, on the, they had the... Uh, Fourth of July parade, Al Zone and uh, Stan were down there looking over, seeing how they can help there where the uh, uh, fire memorial is, you know. So this is this is great. So, you know, it's more than you got yourself involved. Yeah, well, and, and we consider ourselves a, a part of the community, and it's important that we give back to the community, and it's all one team, one family there, and it's all for the good of Norristown or the good of Montgomery County and that type of thing. So we're thrilled to be able to help out with yeah. your... Your, I got some more know. questions here. Sure. I, we're going to get some questions from the audience as soon as because I see some people pulling in, the, walking into the uh, auditorium there. So, all right, now, as a lawyer, what was your toughest case? What was the toughest one to, to make a decision like? Uh, well, I have a lot of tough cases. Um, some of the toughest the divorce ones, cases or uh, well, divorce, child custody uh, or what? Yeah, custody are very difficult. I also get involved in you know, family disputes when they have family businesses and they break up and they don't get along anymore. Yeah, and it's very they, difficult. And what happens, Hank, is a lot of times it's the fathers and they get along and then the fathers pass on and now it's the, the cousins yeah. and they don't get along and it's difficult. It's, yeah. it's even worse than a husband and wife breakup when you have a family business and yeah. that makes it difficult, especially when it's been in existence for years yeah. and that type of thing. Yeah. Now... You ran in the primaries, right? I did. I ran in the primaries, and I was fortunate I won on both tickets. I won on the Democratic ticket and the Republican oh. ticket. So um, I have an easier path. You still have to vote for me in November, but um, it, um, it, I'm certainly going to be on both ballots. So anyone can vote for me on either ballot. Oh, good. All right. And then uh, 
I mean, why? Somebody asked me a question. Says, why do you want to run for judge? Why? Why? Just to look. I, th I asked you a question earlier, that's but it's a right, roundabout that's way. Right, that's all right. It's I view it as public service, Hank, and we need good people to step forward because they're making a lot of why? decisions on a daily basis that affect people's lives. And um, and if you don't have good people step forward, you get what you get. Oh, here's one. Here's a question from up that lady with that blue dress up there. What qualities make you a good judge? What uh, are your qualities? Great, that is a great question. All right. Well, let's see. I have a, a, a lot of experience. I have over 34 years of experience of being an attorney. One. One. Two, I have a wide breadth of experience, which is important. Two. All right. I'm... Uh, I'm a hard worker, Hank. No one will outwork me, and no one will be more prepared I know you're a hard worker because when I met you, you said, I want to go to get go. go. Yep, yep. <laughs> I said, okay. And that's important. You have to be prepared. So right. I'll be more prepared right. than the people that come in my courtroom. Right. The other thing is, is I certainly have empathy for what people are going through. I will listen. I will respect the people. And the most important thing is I'll make a decision when it's time to make a decision, Hank. People need closure. They need to be able to move on with their lives and that type of thing. Yeah. So... I truly believe that I'm going to hit the ground running. Now, something that I've done that other people haven't, for the last 16 years, Hank, uh, Montgomery County judges have volunteer attorneys which help them out. They call us masters. And I've been working with the court for over 16 well, years. Wait, 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 explain that. What is that about? Now, that a lot of people know about that, about masters. Go ahead. All right. What it is is it's like you're a substitute judge. You sit and you listen to arguments. You are cases. a judge, though. You're not a judge. We're a volunteer attorney. Oh, we okay. We sit in for the judge. You call them a master. Yes, they're called a master. Okay. We're volunteer. They call them something else, too, when they get mad. <laughs> if, they don't, if the decision don't go his way. You got it. You got it. But we listen to cases. Uh, we listen to arguments on things, and we make recommendations to the judge and then the judge will make a ruling. But this saves oh. a lot of time for the court, and it helps the cases move along quicker. So I've done that for a while. So that gives me some experience. That gives experience, And it's going right. to allow me to hit the ground running. All right, how about, here's another question, the guy with that blue, blue hat. Take your hat off, you're inside now. Uh, here, are you read it. Read I'll it out read loud. It. I'll read it. How does your staff support your work? Wow, that's, I wouldn't be able to do this without, without my staff. I mean, attorneys, when you're, um, when you're working in a law firm, we have a legal assistant, which is the secretary that helps me with a lot of things. We use paralegals that, um, paralegal. that, that right. assist the Tell attorneys. Tell me what a paralegal is. A paralegal is, that's a tough one to say. A paralegal is they're not an attorney, but they've gone to school and they've been trained in different things, and they assist the attorney in that okay, type of Okay, they even write some, uh, they, they help can, them write some they can write. They yeah. can write pleadings, they can write motions, they can help the do attorney. Do some research, check they it can, out. They right. can do a lot of different things. And then I'm helped by other attorneys in the office where we have younger attorneys that um, help us with doing research and doing writing and that type of thing. So it's very difficult. I would not be here where I am today if I didn't have a whole supporting right, staff right. behind me, and they're still you, helping me out. You gotta surround yourself with good people. You do, and then you gotta listen That's, to them and use yeah. them. And, and, it, and when I become a judge, Hank, they, they, I'll have the same thing. I'll have, I'll have a law clerk, I'll have a secretary, I'll have a clerk, I'll have other people you know, helping I, me in that I, type uh, of thing. I was uh, very fortunate when I was a policeman, I got to know a lot of the judges, you know, and, uh, and it was great. With Judge Smiley and Judge, Judge Holland, I think I bought a car from him. And he, he used to he used to ride this, uh, to work in the bicycle. And I get he was the first uh, number one license. We see a license for bicycles for children. Now, here's a couple more questions. How can people support your candidacy? How can they help you? They can they can come out. Oh, wait a minute, I got to tell them your name. All tell right. them your name, Wendy, loud and clear. Wendy Rothstein. Right. All right, I'm running for judge in Montgomery County. And when's the election? The election is November 7th, Tuesday, November 7th. On that day, in addition to electing judges, you're electing school board candidates. Well, that's you're November electing 7th and not December. November 7th, that's not December. Pearl that's another, yeah, that's another yeah. important day. But um, so on November 7th, people can come out. You're going to have school board races, so you can, you can vote for people running for Norristown School Board. You'll have borough council races, people running for Norristown Borough Council. And then you'll have the judges that there's two, uh, two seats open at the, at the courthouse in Norristown and that type of thing. 
so people can come out and vote. And it's important they come out and vote, Hank. It's important. That's a right they've been given, and it's important they exercise their rights. They get a say, and they need to exercise it. All right, here's another question for this lady just coming in. She's ready to sit down. Go ahead, sit down. Okay, now, here's your question she asked. She sent in. What are your biggest challenge, challenges on the job? What's your biggest challenge now? That's interesting. I think in... You know, these um, are tough questions. These people are about It's a very they tough question. In uh, probably in the, if you sit in the criminal court, Hank, there's a lot of people that come in there and, you know, deciding how harsh a penalty or when the people need another chance and that type of thing. And the thing is, is you want to make sure these people don't come back again. You want to make sure that, that, that they understand what they did and that they learn from their mistakes and that type of thing. So there's a difference with when you give someone a sentence or probation as compared to sending them to jail and what will work so that you don't see these people back again. That's probably the biggest challenge that judges have. And the other thing is this opioid problem, the drug problem. It's a huge yeah. problem. And Judge O'Neill, Judge, Judge O'Neill takes care of that he now, He does right? the drug court. He He's does a great the drug guy. I worked court. with him when he was a DA. Yeah. I was a county and detective. And that's a great court because what that does is if people, they got to stay clean. If they stay clean during right. the program, then they get a second chance. Yeah. And probably the biggest challenge is the drug problems and the people coming to court that have, that have been arrested yeah. because of that and what other things they do to help support their drug habit. So that's probably the biggest challenge. Well, I, uh, I just want to tell you about another judge, okay. Judge Smiley, or right. Judge Smiley, Judge Smoth, Smoth. Smoth, yep. Smythe. Smythe, <laughs> oh okay, my God. Judge Smythe, he's from judge. Norristown, he's a Norristown guy. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep, And he's, he also uh, played he, football, he played offensive. Right, for uh, yeah, Bishop Notre Kenry. Dame. Yep. And one day he got in a fist fight with another guy, and they, uh, he had to come to City Hall now with, uh, with his mother and father, and the mother uh -oh. and father, the other, the other fellow, and... Uh, so they, I settled it down and said, look, I said, you're a good athlete in football. You're a good athlete in basketball. Come on, shake hands, forget about it, you know. And uh, so that was it. So then next thing you know, I became a county detective. He was a district attorney. He came in and says, you remember me? I said, no. Yeah. <laughs> so he became judge, but he'd been so great, you know. And I think he's had a lot of compassion with them. Now, what is, he's semi-retired like, right? He, um, he's on what is called senior status, but he still works. Yeah. And you're right, he does, a, he does a great job, and and that's important. And that's the contact that people have with the system, and it can make a difference what path they take. And what you did for him helped him, and oh, that yeah. type of and thing. Oh, we, yeah, and we were having lunch one time, and the, and the, and the waitress, and not the, the cashier, she says, oh, you're Hank Sisko. I had to come down to City Hall one time uh, with my mother and father, and, and the judge says, I had to, too. <laughs> so he was so, I mean, I, I don't mention that, but he was... Great guy, great guy, good football player too. Was good. Here's another one. Him, wasn't he? You read this one. Uh oh. How does being elected different from being appointed? Okay, that's that's a good question. Um, Pennsylvania. Smart people I know up there. They are. I know Thank they are. you. I know they are. Pennsylvania is one of the few states that elects judges. The federal court, they're appointed, and most other states, they're appointed. So the Wait, voting. You mean like common pleas courts are, are appointed? In other states, yes. In some other states, yes, they are. New Jersey, they're appointed. They're appointed in New Jersey. Well, I think the Attorney General, they changed that about four, ten years ago or so. That used to be appointment by the judge, but now yeah, it's, you're they right, run you're for right. office. You're right. You're right. Attorney General. Because I remember it was uh, Ernie Preate, I think it was. Yep. Now they're elected. Now yeah. they're elected. So there's pros and cons. Some people think that judges should be appointed. Others think that the that the public should get to have a say. I think the I think I, yeah. I think so. Uh, I think I think uh, I think that the judge is a, is is runs by election. I think he has a feeling that the people ask him to to do the job rather than an appointment. He's just going to be loyal to one guy, yeah. and he had to just you know kiss him. Yeah. Well, and it's also your, it's the people that are going to appear in front of you should be the ones that elect you, and that's what happens. Right. And that's why it's important people come out on November 7th to vote, because you still have the right to determine who your judges are, but if you don't exercise that right, then shame on you. What are you doing to get elected? What am I doing, you, Hank? I'm out wait, every do any, night. Do you get any sleep at night? Not much, not much, <laughs> but I, I'm a hard I, we, worker. We only got so. 30 seconds. Come on, yeah. tell me what you want to do now. 
I want to make sure I get elected so I can help the public. And when I'm on the bench, I'll make sure everyone gets a fair shot. I listen to them. They'll be respected, and then they'll get a decision. All right, tell them your name thing. again. My name's Wendy Rothstein. I'm running for judge in Montgomery County. You can look me up, www.wendyrothsteinforjudge.com. Okay, Cat thank Bank, you I so much, it. and there you go. Here's to you. Let me tell you. Everybody that was running for office, come here. You got elected. I so here we go. It. Another lucky winner. Cheers. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for allowing us to come into your home. And there we have someone that's representing Norristown. And Norristown had judges living in Norristown, Judge Dana Howard, Judge Taxis, and then in, in the suburbs. So now it's our chance to help Norristown move along with a judge, okay, that knows the people. And Norristown needs someone the way we are today. The, image of Norristown is not that greatest, and we need judges, we need ple good police officers, good, good district attorneys, and everybody to work together. So until we meet again, may God bless you. Keep bobbing and weaving, left hand high, stick and move, and keep your trunks off the canvas. And may God bless you. Amen. Right. <laughs> Thank you. And away we go. All righty. Thank you. Here's another rock. I love the I didn't spike that.